This is an example of a bubble sort. So let's look at the code and, and see what we have here. Um, we're going to set the array size uh, to 20. Uh, declare our array. Uh, I have a couple of comment statements in here uh, while I was playing with this earlier, so you can uh, comment these statements, uncomment these uh, for your own purposes if you want to set the numbers. Um, instead of setting numbers, I went ahead and um, here created a loop uh, to populate the way array with random numbers. Um, so that'll pop populate the array. Uh, then we'll look at, uh, this is a bubble sort, um, so we're going to go through um, two uh, loops here. So the i loop here, I'm going to call it because our, our counter is, is i. Um, we'll, we'll go through uh, for the size of the array. Uh, and each time at the very beginning of that loop, I'm going to print the array um, just so we can see um, more or less what's going on here. What, how, how does this uh, bubble sort work? Um, and then the workhorse here in the, the second loop, the j loop here, um, we'll actually do some swaps. So we're, we're going to look at uh, element j. Uh, so the first time that would be element 0, the first element in the array, and we're going to look at j plus 1. So that may look strange um, at first, but all we're doing is we're looking at the second element of the array, if j is 0. So we're comparing um, elements in the array that are side by side. Uh, to see if one is larger than the other. Um, and uh, if the next element um, is smaller, um, we're going to swap them. Okay, so we created this temp variable so we can store uh, the first element here, uh, then move the first element into the second element, uh, or vice versa, move the second element into the first element, and then we stored uh, the first one off in temp so we can put that one into the second one. So essentially we're just swapping uh, the adjacent elements of the array um, depending on this. Now right now I have it as less than so we're going to end up with uh, sorted in numerical order if you want uh, uh, in other words ascending if you want descending you could switch that to uh, greater than and, and you would have it the other way. Uh, and then I have one more uh, loop at the bottom to print the array uh, probably don't need that, but let's go ahead and run this and, and see what happens. Um, and so we get the results, and you can kind of see why they call this a bubble sort. Um, you can kind of see at the end our, our max number is 95. Uh, so if we look kind of at our first random um, numbers and we start looking for 95, we see it's right here. And notice, uh, as we went through the swaps, it's always larger to the, than the next element. So the first swap that happened is it swapped these two, um, and then it was, you know, swapped again, swapped again. So that largest number ends up at, at the top. Uh, then the next largest number ends up um, near the top, and then the next largest and the next largest. You can kind of see the pattern. Uh, going through here, if we print it uh, each time it goes goes through, um, so that kind of lets you know we're we're going through both loops twice. Um, we can kind of change um, one thing here in in this loop. We really don't have to go to the top every time because you see that the uh, kind of the max number ends up uh, at the top anyway. So what we can do is subtract off i, which is that first loop. So it tells us how many times we've gone through uh, to do this, this swapping process in the j loop. So it may save us a little bit of time. For 20 elements, we're probably not going to see much of a, of a time savings here. Um, so works the same, operates the same. It's just each time we go through, we start because of this pattern we start a little bit lower in that loop uh, to save a little bit of work. Uh, the other thing we can do um, is I can go up here to the top. I'm going to add a, um, a variable called flag and what we're going to do at the beginning, the flag is going to represent um, 
have we sorted? Have we made any swaps? Because uh, if we haven't made any swaps through that J loop pass, then we've essentially already sorted uh, things. So we're going to start out the I loop and, and assume that um, we're going to set to zero, meaning uh, we, we didn't have any swaps. But then in the J loop, as soon as we make the first swap through this loop, we're going to set the flag equal to one to say there was a swap. We, we potentially need to go through the loop again to make sure um, that it's sorted. And so um, I'm going to add this if statement here saying if we finish the J loop uh, and our flag is still set to zero, in other words, we didn't make any swaps, that must mean it's already sorted. Uh, we don't need to go through the, the I loop any more time, so we will. I'm just going to go ahead and put an output statement here so we, we know that that flag happened, uh, and then we're going to break. So the break will break us out of that uh, I for loop. So let's run this, and this should save us a couple of, couple of times through the loop. And so you can see we didn't run it quite as many times, and as soon as we went through and didn't make any swaps, we know our numbers are already sorted. Uh, so we go ahead and uh, we got the kind of debugging statement here saying flag and that one last uh, printout of the sorted numbers. So um, notice this setting the flag saves you, uh, potentially saves you some, some times through the loop. Um, 